all those things. Now, I would like to say, tell something about how to choose your badminton shoe. You'll all think, knowing, whether, knowing about your badminton shoes, is it be important? Most people focus on racket, but shoes are very important as racket. Good shoes are always essential to move freely, quickly, and efficiently in all directions of your court. Any slip can affect your performance or even your body. Before the talk, I would uh, ask one question to the audience. Uh, whether you have separate shoes for running, training, and all those things, and separate shoes for badminton? Okay. Then my talk is very simple. Uh, American Academy of Podiatric Sports Medicine has classified your shoes as walking shoes, running shoes, fitness shoes or training shoes, and toning shoes. You can see that there are very specific shoes for even hunting, fishing, and boating. So there are so many shoes around the market, and it, it's not just to laugh, it, the, there are so much of technology involved in making each shoe, okay? So we, today we, I will talk only about the coat shoes, that to badminton shoes. So the common mistake everyone does, at least not the players or the coaches, but the recreational players, they think that uh, any shoe, any sports shoe, you can wear for badminton and play. That is not right. Running shoes are not, never substitutes for badminton shoes. Why you want to know? Before that, you need to know the parts of a shoe. The two basic parts of the shoe are the upper, the upper half of the shoe, the sole or the lower half of the shoe. The upper in turn has several parts, the tongue, the lace or the eyelids, the toe box which covers the front toe of your shoe, toe, toes of your uh, foot, the vamp, the front side of your shoe, quarter, the back side of your shoe, the cuff or the collar which surrounds your ankle which gives cushioning to your ankle, the counter which protects your ankle from twisting. Next moving on to the sole, the sole has two main components, the mid sole, the big cushiony part between your upper and the outer sole. The outer sole is the, surf, uh, is the part of the shoe which grips the surface. Now, having told all these things, I would like to compare the shoe with the car so that you can more easily understand. The upper, the upper half of your shoe is the one which covers the front and sides of your shoe, uh, foot, like the body of a car. The midsole is the suspension of the car, which can be compared to the suspension of a car because it gives more cushioning as well as stability. The outer soles can be compared to the tires, which gives traction and grip onto the surface. So the upper of the running shoe is made up of thin, lightweight material, low-cut collar, and it has a sti stiff heel counter. Whereas the upper of the badminton shoes are made up of thick, heavier materials, which prevents your foot from sliding out when you move side to side in your badminton coat. And it will usually, badminton shoes will be having mid-cut collar, which will be covering your ankles, again protecting your ankle from twisting when you move side to side. The outer soles of the running shoe have transverse grooves high profile studs and ridges to grip the surface on, you, on which you are running and high carbon content. Whereas the outer sole of a badminton shoe will have a low profile thread because it should not grip the surface very firmly. Otherwise, when you try to move sideways, you will, you will again twist and fall. The outer sole of badminton shoes are made up of non-marking rubber compound because badminton is an indoor game. So it should not leave streaks or marks on, on the playing surface, but also it should give better grip. And the soles, you, you, uh, Depending upon the coat, they change. The wooden or a polyurethane coat is a coat, if you, is a coat which you are playing. Then you need to choose shoes which have gum rubber soles, which should have plenty of traction and grip. And volleyball shoes are the closest replacement. When you play on cement surface, it is not as elastic as wood or polyurethane surface, so a normal rubber sole will be fine. The outer soles of the badminton shoes usually have flex grooves, lot of winding channel patterns, which make your foot load at different different directions when you move sideways, backwards, backwards, front in all directions of your coat. And there is something called, this is a Zumba shoe, this is not a badminton shoe. Uh, it has, sometimes your shoe might, you, you can see such design. These are nothing but pivot points. Whenever you twist or turn, again, they give more rotational grip to your foot. So moving on to the midsole. The midsole is a region, as I already told, is sandwiched between the upper and the outer sole. It gives cushioning and stability, two things. So the midsole of a running shoe, if you see, it is very large, it give, because uh, you need to strike your foot very often on the ground. So there will be thick and soft cushioning for a midsole of a running shoe. Whereas a badminton shoe, it will be firmer and thinner. You need to know why. Because whenever you use a running shoe which has a thick, softer midsole, it will deform more and your sole tends to tilt whenever you move while wearing a running shoe. Whereas when you wear a badminton shoe, it will deform less and it will have a stable midsole and hence your ankle will be protected against injuries. 
Again, the thinner midsole is again the same reason. The running running shoes have thicker midsole. Again, they they will increase the height of your foot from the ground, and they will have long lever arm on your ground reaction force. And again, you can tend to twist your ankle. Whereas when you use uh, badminton shoes are made up of thinner midsole, they will have decreased height from the ground. Again, they will have short lever arm, and so less chances of injury. So can you guess now which is a badminton shoe and which is a running shoe? The top one or the bottom one? Top one. Yes. So one more thing you need to know, the shape of a shoe, the shoe last. The last is a 3D model over which the shoe is constructed. There are three basic types of lasts or shapes, the straight, curved, semi-curved, and the uh, curved, semi-curved, and the straight. The curved, curved lasted shoe are lighter and less supportive. The semi-curved lasted shoes are more stable than curved and less bulky than the straight. The con uh, motion control shoes or the straight lasted shoes are heavier and provide more arch support. Why you need to know all these shapes? Because you should know your foot for that. Uh, basically, we people have three different types of foot. Normal footers, over pronators are the people with flexible flat foot, and supinators are high arched people or rigid footers. How can you test yourself? You can go to the toilet, you can wet your foot, come out and uh, implant your foot onto a piece of paper or a uh, dry cloth. You can get your foot pattern. Depending upon that, you can assess your foot. Over pronators or flexible fla flat footers need more stable, rigid shoes, like motion control shoes. Whereas supinators who have the opposite problem uh, are rigid footers, they need more flexible shoes. So 10 points rec recommended by American Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Society for a proper shoe fit are have your foot measured. Each time when you go to the shop, have your foot measured. Just don't go by number, I'm, I'm eight, I'm nine, give that shoe. Don't go, the, go by that. Go to the shop, measure the foot at that time. Have both of your foot measured. Why? Because some people tend to have, one, uh, both foot are not of same size. Some people tend to have different shapes of foot. You can see in this picture. So always prefer fit your shoes to the larger foot. Get it measured at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, your feet will swell up and settle. So when your feet are the largest at the end of the day, that is the ideal time to buy your shoe. And the size varies with brand. Again, just don't go by numbers. And the shape of the shoe should resemble the shape of your foot. And it should not be otherwise. Don't plan on shoes stretching over time, seasoning of shoes. Don't think that when you play, your shoes, uh, play with the shoes for a long time, it will season out and adapt to your foot. It's not like that. That rarely happens. They should fit exactly to your foot when you buy them. The ball of your foot should foot fit the widest part of the shoe, where your toe begins is the widest part. And the ball of the foot should fit the widest part of the shoe. See, in this picture, you can see three different foot, but all are of age size. So there is something called toe box, which covers the front half of your foot, forefoot. That should have enough space, and so, and so you should cho choose your shoes, which have adequate toe box. And mind the front gap. Always there should be at least half an inch from the longest toe to the tip of the shoe. Usually it will be the second toe. Just don't sit and select. Always buy your shoes, just put it around, walk, even try to run around and select your shoes. And uh, if you note on uh, lacing techniques, if you are a narrow-footed person, try to use the farthest eyelets for tying. If you are a wide-footed person, try to use the nearest eyelets. If you are a narrow-heeled person, Try to tie, try to use all the holes in your shoe and try to tie the lace which is near your ankle very tightly. If you are a narrow heel and wide four-footed person, wide four-footed and narrow heel person, try to use a double lace so that the holes near your ankle should be tied tight and the hole which is farther away from your ankle or which is nearer to your toes loosely. So finally, knowing all these concepts, my tips to choose your Batman shoe are Select a proper fitting shoe following the 10 steps which I have already told. The ideal badminton shoe will have a thicker uppers, but it should not be very heavy. It should be lightweight also. Thin, firm midsoles. Don't go for bigger midsoles. The shopkeeper will say that this will give a lot of cushioning uh, and those things. The, when you go for more thicker uh, midsoles, you uh, tend to injure your ankle more. You tend to slip and fall sometimes. Not only sprain, you can even fracture your bone also. So choose your uh, shoes according to the surface coat where you are playing and the shoes should give good side to side stability when you move on your ground. Adopt a proper lacing technique according to your feet, wear the shoes only during the game, 
Do not use badminton shoes for running and vice versa. Become familiar with the structural features of the shoe, at least the basics of the shoe, and try to identify your foot and choose your shoe accordingly. Take these features whenever you replace the shoes because don't play with your shoes for, uh, don't get too much emotionally attached with your shoe. Try replacing your shoes very often. Don't hesitate to see your doctor or a sports medicine physio. He will help you out to get the right shoe or its modification. Thank you.